I only read books that might interest me, so maybe I'm a bit biased. But if I can recommend a good book, I will certainly do that. And this Organic Mushroom Farming and Myco Remediation by Trad Cotter is one that I do recommend. It was written in 2014, so it's a fairly recent book. It's got lots of colorful pictures and great illustrations in it. So the first section is general mushroom information. <laughs> but then he goes into, um, well, the chapter is called Cropping Containers. He gives some basic info on how to grow mushrooms, but I can tell he is conscious of waste and I appreciate that, his suggestions for recycling and reusing. Uh, for instance, uh, plastic bags and plastic columns. I didn't know you could reuse those plastics for growing um, and spawn bags. I didn't know you could reuse those plastics. That has always made me cringe with mushroom cultivation is the plastic waste. But at least it's good to know that you could use them a few times before having to throw them out. And then he also advises that you can grow mushrooms on anything that is not biodegradable. You just have to clean it with a bleach solution. So here he says, containers are everywhere. Here we have salvaged items such as lidless coolers, gourds, old pots, and even large PVC elbows. Make use of whatever is available if the need for production exceeds aesthetics. <laughs> um, but just realize that um, you have to clean it, of course, so bleach will be your best friend. So, natural pest control and disease management. I did not know there was so many pests that could affect mushrooms. Like, did you know that mites are allergic to cinnamon? And let's just say dealing in with infestations Bleach is also going to be your best friend. <laughs> but he also gives some neat natural methods to get rid of bugs too. I really appreciated that. Trad gives some great ideas about growing mushrooms on cardboard and any de biodegradable material such as a pair of jeans. <laughs> Look at that. And he also talks a lot about vermicomposting and I'm really into that. So this is a good chapter. Then, shrooming off the grid. Instead of pasteurizing or sterilizing, you can kill contaminants by freezing them. In case you live in a cold climate, this might be of interest to you. He explains how he tested it out. Very cool to know. This chapter, mushroom products and cutting edge applications. This was a favorite chapter about thinking outside of the box when it comes to using mushrooms, like mushroom extracts, using mushrooms for animal feed and making paper and ink out of mushrooms. Some really inspiring and innovative stuff. Worth the price of the book just to get your brain working overtime on how to use mushrooms. Mushroom marketing, Trad has some really good pointers on marketing your mushrooms. Fungi in the classroom. This chapter boggles my mind with all the things that can be done with mushrooms. If you are a teacher or parent, you will appreciate this chapter very much. It has projects and experiments for kindergarten through university. In this chapter, he talks about lab setup and then the most interesting part I found is how he makes his agar plates and what he does with them. And he even uses some antibiotics to help keep the contaminants away. <laughs> Pretty clever stuff. You will surely want to read more about this if you are wanting to experiment with growing mushrooms. I love the scientific side to this whole mushroom process. He gives a lot of helpful suggestions in storing the cultures, but one thing he said struck me as brilliant. It is a good idea to store your collection of cultures in multiple forms at multiple locations. A prolonged power outage, fire, or other natural disaster can ruin years of work spent collecting and culturing fungi with little or no warning. For my own operation, I store duplicates of some of my most important cultures in liquid form in refrigerators belonging to friends and family. 
These small tubes do not take up much space hidden in the back of crisper drawers and they give me peace of mind that in an emergency I won't lose everything. That is pretty cool, hey? Good idea. He devotes a whole chapter to morale cultivation, so you know it's got to be an extra special mushroom for him. It really is a mysterious and technical mushroom to cultivate. His outdoor cultivation explanation was somewhat helpful for me as a novice, but his indoor cultivations <laughs> made my eyes kind of glaze over. However, for any mushroom experts and those especially interested in morales, you will definitely appreciate this chapter. Now, this section was very cool to learn about, how to deal with dog and cat waste. It says, spent myceliated sawdust here with Lentinus strigosus can be used for any pet litter. The fungus helps absorbs urine, and when the litter is removed and placed into a bin, any bacteria and parasites are remediated by the fungus. Isn't that cool? <laughs> and then how he uses uh, mushrooms with the manure your chickens leave behind is just genius. His last section, Meet the Cultivated Mushrooms, is giving helpful information on how to grow and actually how difficult it is to grow specific mushrooms. He does a difficulty ranking by genus and then goes through each genus specifically. There are 24 genus types that he includes. So, for instance, the genus Auricularia uh, this is what he covers, the common species, so it's known as the wood ear or the tree ear. The difficulty level, so outdoor cultivation is a 1, indoor cultivation is a level 2, so those are fairly easy, um, easy to cultivate. Then he gives a general description and ecology of each genus, the mycelium and spawn, fruit body development, common strains and ideal fruiting conditions wild spawn expansion techniques, laboratory isolation and spawn culture, preferred fruiting substrates, outdoor cultivation notes, indoor cultivation notes, harvesting, storage, marketing, nutritional value and medicinal uses, and uses in microremediation. So he does that for each mushroom. So that's really valuable, I feel. I really appreciated that section. And here's Trad himself. I'll read his bio here. Trad Cotter is a microbiologist, professional mycologist, and organic gardener who has been tissue culturing, collecting native fungi in the southeast and cultivating both commercially and experimentally for more than 22 years. In 1996, he founded Mushroom Mountain, which he owns and operates with his wife, Olga, to explore applications for mushrooms in various industries and currently maintains over 200 species of fungi for food production, micro-remediation of environmental pollutants, and natural alternatives to chemical pesticides. His primary interest is in low-tech and no-tech cultivation strategies so that anyone can grow mushrooms on just about anything anywhere in the world. Mushroom Mountain is currently expanding to 42,000 square feet of laboratory and research space near Greenville, South Carolina to accommodate commercial production as well as micro-remediation projects. Trad, Olga, and their daughter Heidi live in Liberty, South Carolina. So, if you are a high school teacher, science teacher, or even university, it would behoove you to get this book. There are lots of great ideas for experiments, and that even might help purify the world. It was a really fun book. I am really glad that I bought it. It's given me fun ideas to try this spring when I start growing my own mushrooms.